Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back to the course titled Decoding Comic Studies and Reading Graphic Narratives in 21st Century India. So I am sure that uh, uh, in the lecture number 9, I discussed Granstein uh, certain aspects of the book and we also talked about his contribution in comic studies and along with it, I also told you that how we are going to read comics, right. So, I will move uh, further from here, but before I move, you remember I, I, I talked about uh, certain words that is uh, arthrology, right, Tussauds and Decopause, right. So, if you remember in the lecture number 9, I was talking about that the author has a very different way of looking at the text when author, author is writing the comics, right. So, he, what he is doing is indulging in the process of a tressage, which means that the act of a weaving, which is a, a more appropriate term would be braiding, right. So, you see that his, he, 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 his preoccupied this thought that he has to bring color, image and the lettering together and he has to uh, braid them, right. This is a tussage. Decopause is what? It is possible for reader that be read in isolation. So, the first let us say for example, we just look at the page, later on we look at the color, then later on we look at the frames, later on we what we look at the letters and we read it and then it, it is possible that in the end we try to make meaning out of it that how they all are corresponding to each other how they all are communicating with each other, how they all are weaved, right, how all they are braided. So, author knows in the beginning itself, whereas the reader is in the process to do this later, all right. So, therefore, I just wanted to talk these two particular terms before I start this lecture, so that you have in the mind that how the comic is done, how it is written and how it is understood, how we make meaning out of it. Therefore, we have to look at all these aspects. Today, why lecture number 10 is extremely significant in a different way? It is going to talk something very important, obviously continuing the talk where it left in the last lecture, is lecture number 9, where we left, I am just proceeding with it. I have deliberately put is as arthrology and iconic solidarity. The reason is that as I was talking in the lecture number 9, right, lecture number 9 I was talking about that is, yes, atom is the smallest unit, but is that mean electron, proton, neutron, they all have a different, uh, they like are they complete in themselves? The answer is no, they are not complete in themselves, they are only making meaning together, they all can make no sense if they are functioning isolation. So, therefore, they have to come together and which is why iconic solidarity, which means that when we are looking at a particular frame, right, when we are looking at a particular frame, we have to see that how they all icons are in uh, uh, synchronous with each other, how they all are in solidarity with each other, then only it can create a meaning with us, all right. So, that is why it is a new way to read comics and this is the new contribution done uh, by the artist, all right. So, now going back to the slides, please now you see that there I was talking about, here you see that now iconic so solidarity, right. If you miss this, then you will not be able to see what I was discussing 
in the last lecture that will make meaning all right this is why i have deliberately put it here so now the system of a comics right let me write it for you the name of the book the system of the comics the system of a comics is divided in three chapters right it is divided in three chapters the spatio topical system restrained orthology which means the sequence and the third it general orthology the network going further let me uh, explain to you this that what is a restrained orthology and what is a general orthology right if you remember my uh, previous lectures where i was talking about comics as a sequential art right what i was talking about that right if you remember i was generally saying that b makes sense that in sequence right if you say i talked also about different kind of a panel i talked about different kind of pages so how meaning are moving in step by step you remember that i showed you also the when i was talking about time and space i was also talking about the horse how it's moving but it is in sequence you can make meaning okay now this is happening now this is happening now this is happening now this is happening so you see the meaning in sequence and then in if you bring all the sequence together in sequence it will generate a complete meaning right so that is a restrained orthology which means that if we are looking at the page one by one we are going through all right so you remember uh, uh, before uh, modernism came into the existence all kind of a novel written all kind of uh, things being talked about they were not breaking any sequence they were all in sequence there is a birth of a character then he is becoming a father and then later he is dying so this is a sequence is talking about most of the work produced before the modernism had something to do with the sequence right they all were written in sequence and let's say for example dickens we read in the beginning go into the middle in the end that's it we got the meaning jane austen pride and prejudice beginning middle and it has an end we understood the meaning right so what are we doing we are reading in sequence but the moment we enter into the modernism what we experience what we understand when we come to the modernism we see something has happened in the beginning itself which will make sense once we know the end in fact end can only make a meaning once it has a like beginning so which means something which should happen in the end has already happened in the beginning itself right so entire work of art right the book once it's a complete then only it is making meaning to us which means it is not following the sequence what i mean following the sequence that what has happened in the first page you can only relate you can only understand what is happening on the first page once you read the last page then you will realize oh that is the particular reason that why something was created on the first page oh that is a reason why there was a picture of so and so on the first page so that is what we called the network you know which means that it is somewhere somehow related from different way so this is what we called general orthology all right so i took time to explain to this so that when i talk about further slides it can you can make sense of it all right so going back to the slides now you see that on the slide this that at the heart of grandstein's system is the concept of a spatio topical system which draws on the basic principle of iconic solidarity which is the most fundamental unit of a comics according to him so this is a very important contribution made by grandstein grandstein is talking about iconic solidarity 
which is the most fundamental unit of a comics according to Goenstein, which means solidarity among icons that makes panel, you know. So, which means that there is a there is a, there, there is a similarity with something that is deliberately made with icons. What will fit where? Right? Think about this. Author when he is writing, Prasaj, what will fit where is deliberately done, right? And therefore, he says that the smallest unit is a panel, which means that in a particular panel, there is an image deliberately done with the purpose. There is something bubbles deliberately done with a particular purpose. There is something lettering deliberately done with a particular purpose. So, that is why for him, the fundamental unit of a comics is nothing but iconic solidarity, which means a panel because of the particular reason. Let us say for example, that it is not, something is not placed in on that particular panel for no reason. It has a particular reason. So, this is why, remember I am deliberately bringing that analogy of proton, neutron, electron. These are only meaningful in relation to something, right? In, because solidarity is important. So, in the same fashion, how things are arranged, we have to focus on it, right? How things are placed in a particular panel, that is becomes very important. So, remember this iconic solidarity phrase because I will keep using it and you need to understand, you need to know what it means, right? So, I am sure that I have explained you uh, more, now going back to the slides. So, here you see that uh, uh, what we what like what we try to learn the last lecture first, right? We try to learn about the various debates on the definition of a comics and the way in which critics and historians often differ from each other, keeping that in mind. Grandstein take the analysis a step further to simplify the defining process. He draws on the connection between literature, art and comics to establish comic as a language. Let me write someone for you, right. If you see this character, he always comes in the yellow frame, right he always comes in the yellow color frame. So, we have to see the connection with this yellow color and with this particular character, right. You see, I am sure that you are familiar with the watchman, right, where, where you see the icon across pages and scene are used where one singular icon connects all pages. Let me write it for you, right, so that you can understand. One singular icon connects all pages, right. So, one icon is moving from another icon to another icon in all pages and they all are connected to each other in some way or the other way and that is why it is called iconic solidarity, right. So, 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 Grand, so Grandstein is trying to simplify this the entire process of a defining. So, he is what he does, he brings a kind of a connection between literature, art and comics to establish comics as a language, right. How are we going to know, how are we going to read the language called comics? It is only when we are familiar with the grammar of a particular language, the semantic process, the syntactic process. And what is the semantic process? What is the syntactic process of a particular language? In the same way, for comics, Grandstein as a theory is evolving the idea of iconic solidarity. He is talking about restrained orthology, he is talking about general orthology, he is talking about spatio-topical system, so that he can build a connection between literature, art and comics and, and the reason of it is that he want to establish comics as a language, alright. So, moving to the next slides, 
here I'm going to explain to you more about iconic solidarity, right? And this is a very, very important. You, the moment you listen Goenstein, you have to immediately think about Goen's, uh, iconic solidarity, right? It's a, it is almost like you listen the name of a Derrida and you think of a deconstruction, right? In the same way, the moment you listen iconic solidarity, oh, it's a French person called Goenstein who contributed to this, who coined this, who brought this idea in the academic called comic studies, all right? So going back to this uh, slide, now you see that it must be understood that if one wishes to provide the basis of a reasonable definition for the totality of a historical manifestation of the medium and also for all of the other productions unrealized at this time but theoretically conceivable, one must recognize the relation, relational play of a plurality of interdependent images as the unique ontological foundation of a comic. See, what I am talking about it here is interdependent images. Now, remember this and let me show you this picture again, right. Here you see, here you see again. This is like a wheel, this is a handle, this is a hand of this particular person. So, interdependent images, here you see interdependent images. Can you suppose it is it's a perfect example my dear friends of iconic solidarity, perfect example, right. Because this image, this image, this image, this image, they all are connected, interdependent and then only we can understand the foundation of a comics, alright. So this is why I am talking about this, alright. So the relationship established between these images admits several degrees and combines several operations. But their common denominator and therefore the central element of a comics, the first criteria in the foundational order is what Dunstein calls iconic solidarity. And how it is defined in his book? I have uh, used a, a quote that is interdependent images. You have to focus on, understand. This is not just a particular term, this is how we are going to understand the comics and the contribution made by Groenstein. Interdependent images that participating in a series present the double characteristics of being separated. This specification dismisses unique enclosed images, right. It is not unique enclosed images, but they are all they all are in solid solidarity with each other, with the profusion of a patterns or anecdotes and which are plastically and semantically over determined by the fact of their coexistence in presentia, right, not in absentia, but coexistence, look at this coexistence in presentia which means here you see coexistence in presentia. So, they all are existing along with each other coexistence this exists along with this and then this. So, they all are coexisting right and what else have we also see that interdependent participating they all are participating in a series right. So, this is a definition of uh, so before understanding the importance of 
iconic solidarity. Let's understand the connection that Groenstein draws between literature and the comics. Now, what we are going to see further is that connection between literature and comics, right? What is a lit like connection between literature and comics? So, see, so comics encounter a particular problem that is similar to which has long concerned the world of literature. Everyone admits that it is not sufficient to simply align words in order to make a literary work. For that reason, all the material that humanity can utilize among others in the fine arts, language is perhaps the least specific, the least closely reserved to this end. Right? So, let me explain in a very simple way, right? So that you can relate what I am trying to suggest. See, there was a huge debate uh, in all the uh, discipline. They all are concerned how to define what this, this particular discipline is, right? Let us say, why are we not going to call sociology as a political science or philosophy is not a literature, literature is not a science, science is a, 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 not a art, right? Why? So, they are, they are more concerned that how we can define our own discipline. I will not go to the other discipline, I will talk about literature itself. You see, there is a huge debate that went on in fighting with how to define what literature is, right? If you ask anyone, so people will say literature is a mirror of society. Right? Generally that is what definition is acceptable. Acceptable means that is how people are being taught. People have consumed this definition, right? And in fact, in my classroom, when I go and I ask this question and they say, yes, literature is a mirror of society. In Hindi they say, Sahitya Samaj ka darpan hai. And the problem is, we never debated on this, we never contemplated on this, we never thought that, oh really, what does this mean, literature Samaj ka darpan hai, or literature is a mirror of society. So, we thought that general, simple, literal meaning of this phrase is that literature reflects what happens in the society. And then I ask some fundamental question is how newspaper is not a literature then? Because newspaper accurately reflects the society than literature. All right. It talks about everything that has happened in the society in details. Sociology also talks about society. It also reflects the society. All right. In fact, uh, uh, sociology has a lot to do with society. It's only right more than that. Literature, what it does. So we never got in the ontology or epistemology of the very definition of a literature when we say that literature is a mirror of a society, right? And when I give an examples of, let's say, for example, many examples that I give of a text, let's say, for example, uh, Macbeth, Merchant of Venice, Middle March, right? Emma, Sense and Sensibility. Uh, Ulysses, name any literature or let's say uh, novel or let's say drama. How does it reflect the society? It does not reflect the society because Aristotle is the person who was more concerned about defining what literature is. He never said that literature is mirror the society. In fact, the huge debate between Plato and Aristotle was more about how to define what poetry is. All right? So, Obviously, you all know that uh, Plato banished the poets by saying that uh, art uh, corrupts the society and in our republic, I am not going to give a place to the artist or let's say to art. Philosophy is a more important and uh, uh, great uh, subject, 
to teach and to discuss better. Whereas Aristotle then started saying that art has a more mimetic, is a more mimetic, is it imitates, and which is why what interestingly I am not going to talk in details. He says that it does not talk about how the society is, but it talks about how a person ought to be, ought to be. You see, now here you see certain instruct to delight and morality is there, which Longinus says to instruct to delight and to so, so, so to instruct to delight is an important feature of uh, literature. So, you see the debate goes on and on. If I speak, I have to speak for one hour, but just I want to relate it that how does it connect with a, uh, our comic studies that they are all are trying to understand that what is a literature. They all are trying to understand how to define what literature is. So, if they all are concerned about the very idea of a definition of a work of art, all right. Comic studies is also struggling with the same problem is to explain that how I am going to say that this is a comics, right. Let us say for example, what we study here, what does, how the language of the comic should be, right. So, keep this context in the mind, I will come back to explanation more. But keep this context in the mind and now you understand that how are we going to explain the literary form of the comics, alright. So going back to the slides, what you see that comics like everyone admits that it is not sufficient to simply align words in order to make a literary work, right. It is not simply sufficient to align words in order to make a literary work for the reason that of for the reason that of all the material that humanity can utilize among others in the fine arts language is perhaps the least specific the least closely reserved to this end Resuming a debate begin in the time of Aristotle, Gerald Janet struggles to define the criteria of literati, that is to say the condition by which a text can be recognized as a literary, right. Let me think for a second, what is the condition that what is the condition in which a literary works qualifies to be called a literary, right? There should be something literary in a literature. Otherwise, how are we going to say it is a literature, right? Let us say very famous definition of a poetry given by Wordsworth, a spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling, emotion recollected in tranquility. And most of us have forgotten the second part of a definition that is emotion recollected in tranquility and we just simply think and presume that a spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling is the accurate definition. But my dear students and friends that is not true. Does that mean let us say for example, I got up in the morning from my sleeping bed and there was certain overflow of spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling. So, there was certain overflow of my feeling and I started not, like I started writing it down and I gave it to you and then you say it is a poetry. So, does that mean from tomorrow onwards in your classroom my feeling that erupted in the morning spontaneously should be taught? should be discussed and people should uh, uh, prepare uh, questions on it, you should write an assignment on it, no. So that is a problem we have been struggling with. The problem we have been struggling with that it is not simply aligning words some way. Let us say I read a lot of uh, people say it is a poetry because we see that somehow it is making a rhyming scheme that is it, right. 
I was uh, sleeping in the night, then I had a fight, right? So, is that a poetry? So, this is the problem that, that also comics is also evolving. So, what Aris, after Aristotle, Gerald Jenner is struggling also with the, like he is struggling with the criteria of literati. Like what are the conditions by which a text is going to be recognized as literary, right? Going back to the slides, now you see that uh, Gronstein concedes in the same way to the essentialist that it is not sufficient to simply align images even interdependently to produce a comic, right. So, <clears throat> it is just not that what you do when you are going to write a comic, let us say for example. So, what do you do when you are writing a comics? Okay, so, so far what I have understood that there should be a comics, like to write a comics, there should be some graphics, some images and some words written on it and some pictures, some colors, some panel and now I am going to call it as a comics, right. Because it matches with the other good comics produced by comic artist. Because they also have a figures, I also have a figure, they have a colored their picture, they have colored their figures, I also have colored, there are certain words written on their pages, I also, I am going to also write certain pages, certain words on the pages. So, now they both are same and that is why he is also, he also has produced a comic, he has also produced a book which falls under the criteria for comics. I also have a produce which has to more with the comic medium and therefore, let us, uh, 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 let us call ourselves as a comic artist. But no, that is what Grandstein concedes that no, 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 even if images are interdependently related with each other, that is not the right condition, that is not the right qualification to produce a comic, right. Then what else? Look at the slide. What here you see? What is saying? There are many other condition can be legitimately debated, which would touch in priority initially the nature of these images, which means their substance has to be debated, like what substance would be of a particular image, their mode of production, their formal characteristics, their modes of articulation, the published form that they take, their distribution and the condition of reception, right. These are important aspects that have to be debated to be like something to be qualified as a work of art. So, in short, everything that inscribes them in the specific process of a communication, but obviously, it is very improbable that anonymity will be reached on any of these conditions, right. So, that is true, like it is not just about the images, it is just not about the lettering, it is not just about the speech balloons, it is not just about the panels, but also there are certain characteristics or nature of these images which means what would be the substance of the comics. What would be the mode of production? What would be the mode of articulation? What would be the mode of reception? Right? These things must also be debated before we come to any consensus that this is now, if, if these, these things are available, then we can call something as a comics. Obviously, it is almost like impossible how uh, I mean the kind of a work of art produced in a different ages, in different types, different times, in different conditions, in different uh, uh, 
uh, situations, context, it will be very impossible. But at least something has to come out of the vast discussion, debate, and out of some consensus and dissensus. All right. So moving ahead, now you see in the next slide. In reality, research on the essence of comics is not quite on the same order as that of a definition of literary, right? So, which means we are like I am giving the examples of literature, but also one has to understand that literature is not exactly what comics is, right? So, the point is to separate the literary discourse from all other forms of discourse, starting with everyday languages, right? So, literature is characterized by a rupture which ordinary regime of the language, the clearly posed question from them on is to define that which makes a verbal message a work of art. The rupture can be analyzed in terms of a fiction. In so far as a work of a fiction develops in the reader an aesthetic attitude and a relative disinterest with regard to the real world or perhaps in terms of a diction that is to say by the observation of the formal traits that are facts of style the this opposition is stretches to coincide with the division of the field of literature into two great types on the one hand fiction which means dramatic or narrative on the other lyric poetry more and more often designated by the term poetry all told, comics rest on a device that is not known from familiar uses. One cannot help but compare it with other forms of creation that participate with complete rights in the domination of art or fiction. So, so like like it is not noted that everything can be expressed by this means. Even if the practice of comics is technically and financially speaking available to everyone as is confirmed by the aptitude of those children who devote themselves to it, one cannot help but compare it with other forms of creation that participate with complete rights in the domains of art or fiction. So, here you see that since comics are not based on a particular uses of a language, there is no place to define them in terms of addiction, right. So, but neither are they bound exclusively with fictional forms, since there are examples of publicity or propagandist comics politically and pedagogical comics and occasionally comic journalism where the concern is to inform or to testify. See, these are the very simple idea and I am sure that uh, uh, you can relate very quickly and easily. At one way you see that literature or let us say comics both are related to each other, right. But at the same time you see uh, they are not in sync with each other, right. But let us say for example, Dixon uh, becomes very important in literature which is not exactly in the same way prominent in comics but yes, but not the way in, uh, in, in poetry, always in literature, right. But the point what I am talking about is that comics has many things to do. It is politically motivated, means it also talks about the politics. It is a pedagogical. The way you choose narrative is also not fictional. You cannot say it's a fictional, but it is also fictional, all right. So, what I am talking about that, and that is why I have to keep the title like a plasticity of a comic, right? It is like it, it is like liquid which cannot 
be placed on one particular position wherever you want to place it it will go into it and will seep it will not be well limited to that it's not that it will be limited to that it will move in other directions as well all right so since the first lecture i have been talking about this simple point that whenever we think about it we have to think that it has a plasticity it is fragile fragile does not mean weak fragile simply means that delicate delicate again like means like it can i mean these are not appropriate word but what i mean to see that it it can be fit into other things as well but it can also can be not limited to that all right so moving to the next slide you see <clears throat> so what do you interestingly find here that since comics are not uh, based on a particular uses of a language there is no place to define them in terms of a diction but neither are they bound exclusively with the fictional forms all right let's say for example i was talking about that prolif proliferation of uh, autobiographical comics right autobiographical comics that is a remarkable remarkable phenomena of recent uh, years right if i ask you that have you read any uh, autobiography you will say many but if i say have you read any autobiographical comics you you cannot even think for a second right oh really there is something called autobiographical comics is someone writing autobiography in the in the form of a comic medium right no it is because our imagination is limited when we think about the comics but today i have be made it very clear that there are instances of level where autobiography have been written in the form of a comic medium with the help of a comic medium right so you see now the experiment and the uh, new way to look at comics all right so looking at the slides again you see that uh, comic mediums has given multiple opportunity to produce n number of uh, n number of uh, uh, genre so let's say for example if you see the uh, i'm talking about when i'm talking about the autobiographical comic just for example you see i will write it for you robert crumb you can read he has written autobiographical comics right and we have also horway picker right and let's say the third one everyone knows him art is pegal man these people open the door for uh, writing different forms of uh, uh, comic all right so the plasticity of a comics the plasticity of a comics which allows them to put in place masses of every order and narration other than the fictional demonstrate that before being an art comics are well and truly a language but it is not necessary at this stage of reflection to push the corner concern for the delimitation of the medium further ahead so for gronstein one cannot conceptualize comics without verifying the general rule that is called iconic solidarity the necessary if not sufficient condition required to speak of a comics is that image will be multiple and correlated in some fashion this fact is empirically verified by whoever leaps through a comic book or comic magazine what is put on view is always a space that has been divided up compartmentalized a collection of juxtaposed frames where to cite the final uh, sorry fine formula of henry van leer right uh, what he says a multi framed aircraft 
sails in suspension in the white nothingness of the printed page just to quote Henry Vanlier all right so a page of a comics is offered at first to a synthetic global visitor but synthetic look at this idea i'm deliberately putting it so that you can understand a page of a comics is offered at first to a synthetic global vision but that cannot be satisfactory it demands to be traversed crossed glanced at and analytically deciphered so this moment to moment remember that frame this moment to moment reading does not take a lesser account of the totality of the panopticon field right this moment to moment reading does not take a lesser account of the totality of the panoptic field that constitute the page or the double page since the focal vision never ceases to be enriched by peripheral vision right so we that is why you know you see synthetic global vision and focal vision never ceases to be enriched by peripheral vision all right so iconic solidarity <coughs> is the only necessary condition so that visual message in the first approximation be assimilated within a comic right uh, uh, as a physical object every comic can be described as a collection of uh, separate icons and interdependent images far from wanting to defend a school of a thought an era or a standard against others or again to prescribe any recipes goldstein believes that we should note the diversity of all forms of a comics and spare his reflection from any normative character that is why he has chosen the notion of the system which defines an ideal as emblematic of this reflection the comic system is a conceptual frame in which all of the actualization of the ninth art as comics is considered in france as a ninth art can find their place and be thought of in relation to each other so taking into the account their differences their commonalities within the same medium so in this meaning the notion of the system as an assemble of a thing that are held advances the fundamental accept of a solidarity so throughout the book Goldstein emphasizes the importance of the readers active engagement with the comic are going that meaning is created through a complex interplay between the comic and the reader so overall the system of a comics is a complex and challenging work but one that has had a significant impact on the field of a comics theory it provides a useful framework for understanding the structure and language of a comics and has influenced subsequent work in the field all right so now <coughs> that's a very <coughs> important thing uh, has to be discussed the spatio topical system right spatio topical system so what do you see here that the spatio topical system explained in the first chapter refers to the way that comics use space and time to create meaning right which i have already uh, discussed in the previous one ki that how we have to understand the idea of space and time in comics grandstein breaks down the element of this system in various categories including the hyperframe remember this uh, particular word i'll talk about it which refers to the panel and borders and gutters that separate panels and the page which refers to the overall layout of the comic see 
what I mean by hyper frame right I simply I will explain in one minute and then I will move to the next slide hyper frame is not just a one frame which means keeping the entire work of art in one frame right what is suggest hyper frame that the first page or the second page is very much related to the middle of the book or the end of the book so hyper frame is the overall book right it's from first to the end it's overall complete book is relates with the hyper frame right so whenever i say hyper frame keep this idea in your mind this is simple all right so moving to the next slide what do you see that uh, this uh, this idea of uh, so there are three parameters to the spatio topical features of a comic panel and that is very important to understand uh, uh, the spatio topical system so uh, first it's a form which simply i mean geometrical shape see i'm very specifically talking about so that you can understand it's a form it simply suggest here here it's a geometrical shape second it's area which means the space it occupies on the page simple area means space is occupies on the page and the third is its position in relation to the other panels on the page all right so Gronstein's system is not limited to the spatio topical system however he also discusses the role of uh, characters role of uh, narration and the other elements in creating meaning in comics so he just not talk about only this but he also talk about the role of character narration that how meaning can be created now that is the second chapter restrained orthology the sequence focuses on the linear relation of a panel to each other so as i said one is a uh, 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 orthology let's let's talk about first what is orthology orthology is the study of the relationship between different elements of a comic right simple different elements of a comic how they are related to each other what is the relationship between when we are doing a study of it like what is orthology like in this like it's taken from the actually this term is borrowed from the science right so orthology is the study of the relationship between the different element of a comic the so, gronstein breaks orthology in two parts right one is special second is general special orthology refers to the sequence itself the strip and the sequential definition of the comic general orthology on the other hand refers to the network of relationship between the different elements of the comic including panel pages and sequences so remember this special orthology is talking about the sequence referring to the strip and sequential definition of the comic whereas general orthology is referring to the network of relationship between the different elements of the comic different elements may be panel may be pages may be sequences all right so gronstein's theory of a general orthology is a way of understanding the complex relationship between different elements of a comic gronstein's theory of a general orthology is based on the idea that a comic is a network of relationship between different elements including panels pages and sequences these relationship are not just spatial but also temporal and they create a complex web of connection between different parts of the comic gronstein argues that this network of relationship is what gives a comic its meaning and that understanding this relationship is essential to understand the comic as a whole one way to understand general orthology is to look for recurring motif throughout the comic 
these motifs can be visual such as a particular shape or color they can be thematic such as recurring idea or symbol by identifying these motifs tracing their connection throughout the comic readers can gain a deeper understanding of the relationship between different elements of the comic by identifying recurring motifs and tracing their connections throughout the comic reader can gain a deeper understanding of the relationship between different parts of the comic all right so here i will just uh, talk about that uh, this system of a comics has only recently begun to influence american comic theory and differs vastly from most american work first of it is far more systematic than the average american comic studies book goldstein erects a structure applicable to all comics and exemplified by the best of a comics his structure breaks down along two poles the spatio topical system and orthology he also employs the strategic use of two items throughout the like throughout to build the structure that is decoupers and tracers decoupers that is translated as a breakdown get used fairly loosely throughout the work signifying the way a page or a work is broken down into discrete units the piecing together of those units the indissolubility of the page or work as well as the basic breaking down of movement inherent in sequentiality uh, that is what uh, uh, grandstein calls this last meaning restricted uh, orthology tracers translated as a braiding signifies something similar both the generation of a meaning through the layering of discrete units and the division of a meaning into discrete panels threads layers the spatio topical system characterizes the layout of the page and the conversation between various elements so here grunstein develops various comic terms and specific definition of each such as panel frame balloon image icon gutter etc and introduces new term such as the hyperframe the hyperframe as i just now uh, spoke in details is the page itself in which all the units coexist this subtle move allows him to talk about any print medium that could conceivably be considered a comic for it must in the end exist on a page however it also signifies nothing particular to comics so see i already uh, uh, talked about uh, decoupers tracers and hyperframe and that is what he is talking more about it so but i just explain to you in a few minutes what it means in the last lecture i mean lecture number 11 when we are meeting next time i'll uh, discuss this more in a subtle way obviously by now you have understood what this concepts mean but i will talk more about it in a subtle way and will discuss further about these ideas so uh, uh, for now read these ideas for yourself so that we can meet next time and can engage more widely all right so see you next time take care bye bye